Tech. Welcome back after the break. Um, Okay, there's a question here from uh, Daniel. I'm not sure whether he's back after the break. Yeah, he's here. Okay, so uh, Daniel says that in his church, when they put in the offering, they uh, every Sunday they have to put the offering in an envelope. And in that envelope, they have to write their number, mobile number, their names, and their address. Then only they can put it in the um, offering box. So... Are you saying, Daniel, this is your the tithe offering cover, or is it just a general offering that you put every Sunday? Because most churches, they follow this for tithes. They have a cover where they have all your details, your address, your phone number, and your, um, your name as well. I think that just helps in helping the database of the church and keeping the address in the contact number and also to know as a member that you're offering your tithes um, for accountability of the church as well uh, that's why most churches have these tithe covering cover offerings which we all put in okay but are you talking about the general offering that we take every sunday oh you're talking about a general offering i think that is too much the general offering to have a cover for every Sunday, writing your name, mobile number, I think that uh, is going too way beyond. But you can always ask the pastor why he's doing it, what is his idea be behind this, why he's doing what he's doing. So good to go and approach him and share and also to share your feedback with him. But again, I said, when I say, don't, you know, uh, pray about it, don't be judgmental and condemning, take others also. Tell them what is the repercussions of it, how people are leaving the church. Um, you know, sometimes uh, it's not good to send a WhatsApp message about these things or an email. Because when we do, when we send a WhatsApp message or an email, sometimes the person can read with their, in their own emotions, mindsets. So their emotions can, oh, you know, he's ordering me or he's bossing over me or he's condemning me or judgmental about what I'm doing. So he can read it with his own lenses uh, and the way he sees things and his own emotions. Good to sit face to face and talk so they're able to see uh, your whole purpose, why you're doing what you are doing. Okay, does, this, does that help, Daniel? Okay. So we'll move on to chapter six, uh, anointing, okay? Now, when people are saved, healed, delivered, when we pray, or people's lives are transformed, when we preach and teach, uh, how does it happen? When people are healed, when you pray or delivered, or they get receive an answer or uh, restored, you know, there's a breakthrough, when you preach or teach and you pray for them, what really happens? How does it happen in their lives? How does this miracle happen? It's a work of the Holy Spirit, okay? And it's the anointing that flows through you, okay? So is it you as a person who is doing it? No. It is the anointing. What is the meaning of anointing of the Holy Spirit? When we say anointing of the Holy Spirit, what do we mean? I've mentioned this a couple of times. When I was teaching the previous two publications, anyone remembers what is the meaning of anointing? What does anointing of the Holy Spirit mean? Two Ps. P for pen. Two Ps. What are the two Ps? Come on, think. What do you need to bring about healing and deliverance? What is a P that you need? Power, right? <laughs> Hello, wake up everyone. The power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So remember, anointing two Ps, power and presence. Okay? So it is not how gifted you are, how great a speaker you are, how charismatic you are, and how, you know, how much of the word of God you know, how you can just, you know, rattle off God's word and preach and teach and uh, how gifted you are in preaching and teaching and speaking and all that. Even people who are great orators can preach and teach. But what is it that 
transforms people's life or people are saved or people are healed and delivered and restored is the anointing of God. Okay. And um, we learned about, you know, we learned about gifts. Remember, we talked about gifts, function and grace when we studied, I think, uh, receiving God's guidance. We studied about function, gifts and grace. Okay. Now, why is gifts and grace given to us? To fulfill what? God's? God's purpose? Gifts and grace is given to us to fulfill the function that God has given to us in the body of Christ. Do all of us have a function in the body of Christ? Yes. So the gifts and grace are given to fulfill that function. Okay. So what is the gifts of God given to us? You know, gifts are an anointing are given to people for what? Look at what the word of God says. Uh, look at your uh, your um, uh, the publication, your notes, sorry. Look at your notes, please. And look at the three references given there. I want you all to all read it quickly by yourself. And tell me what are anointing and gifts given to people. Why are anointing and gifts given to people? To serve people. What else? To build up the body. Thank you, Sister Gibbs. To build up the body of believers. Okay, what else? Is given for the edification or building up of the body of the uh, believers also. So that God's people can be served. Gifts and grace is not given to show how super spiritual, super mature, superman, superwoman you are. Okay, there is no superman, superwoman. All of those things is not is not applicable when you know you're moving mightily in the anointing. It's actually it's just showing how the power of God is being released to you because how intimate you are in your relationship with God. It is there to gifts and grace is also given to build people and to expand the kingdom of God. Okay, so sometimes what we mistake uh, or make a mistake in doing is when when people preach and teach and you know people are restored and people are saved or when they pray there's healing deliverance happening we associate it with that person right with that man and woman of god that's wrong okay we shouldn't associate it with just them it's we know we need to know it's the power of the holy spirit the anointing of the holy spirit more uh, flowing in and through the person okay and also, the more anointed you are, the more gifted you are, what should you do as a person? If you're very gifted and anointed, what should your attitude be? Huh? You should be humble, yes. You should be a servant to all. Remember what Jesus said? Follow the example of what Jesus did. What did Jesus do? He said, you have come to serve and not to be served did jesus mightily flow in the anointing and the gifts yes or no some of you are doubtful okay but we see that he came to serve so our gifting and anointing should be more to serve the body of christ and to build the body of christ okay our gifting and our anointing should not uh, be used to base our identity okay we should not look at ourselves, the giftings and anointing should not be something that we think we are spiritual, mature, you know, more godly or super spiritual, superman, superwoman compared to other people. What should, on what should our identity be based on or built on? What should our identity be built and based on? Word of God? Who we are in Christ. Okay, who we are in Christ. Our identity should not be based on the good works, the giftings, the anointing, the spiritual calling. All that is very important. Okay, the good works that we do, are, yes, it should reflect Christ. Okay, I identity who we are in Christ. Okay, Paul says we are God's workmanship. We are his handiwork. We are created in Christ Jesus. We are bought by his precious blood. Okay, 
and we need to see ourselves as who we are in Christ. It's important for us to be more Christ-like than just running behind anointing and gifting. The more Christ-like we are, the more anointing and anointed and gifted, uh, no, the more anointing will flow through us and the gifts also will flow through us. Okay, so we should never think that it's all the people who are being uh, delivered, healed, you know, restored, saved is because of me. Sometimes we can come to that place. It's very dangerous. We need to humble ourselves. Always know that it is God, the Holy Spirit, working his anointing, his power, his presence. And we need to give God all the glory. So how do we keep ourselves constantly in a place of, uh, uh, of uh, humility? even when we are flowing mightily in gifts and anointing. How can we keep ourselves in that place, the right place, where we don't come to a place of pride and thinking it's all happening because of me, because I am super spiritual or I am super powerful? What should we do? What are some of the steps we need to take? Come on. We need to be mindful of who we Ah, that we are just earthen vessels is without God's anointing we are nothing we need to be humble before God another thing word starts with O what should we do obedience yes always living in obedience and under God's will and we need to keep our what is our greatest enemy who is our greatest enemy huh we learned other than the devil Somebody in us, our flesh, our flesh is our greatest enemy. Yes, we ourselves are our greatest enemy, our flesh. So we need to keep our flesh in control and keep control over our mind. Okay. Um, now, in the Old Testament, God had asked them, you know, to make a special um, anointing oil. You know, told Moses to make a special anointing oil. He gave him all the ingredients and told him that they should not make, nobody should use the same ingredients to make any perfume or lotion that they can apply for on their own bodies. Okay, this anointing oil is specifically to be sprinkled on every utensil and everything in the tabernacle. Okay, so this holy anointing oil in the Old Testament was a type of the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, okay? Which means we need to understand that the anointing of God cannot be manifested in the flesh, okay? Um, it cannot be used for fleshly purposes, okay? We need to treat it with reverence and or the or even the anointing of God, okay? The anointing is pure but we as earthen vessels we are not pure we are imperfect okay but the anointing is perfect and sometimes we can flow mightily in the anointing but we can come to a place where we are filled with pride and we can move in the things of the we can move in our fleshly nature or in our carnal nature okay and that is when we can imitate the anointing in the flesh and we can say, you know, God is saying this. When God has not spoken to us, we're saying the Holy Spirit is saying this. When the Holy Spirit has not spoken to us. Or sometimes, you know, we are so pressurized to say something, to do something, to release words of prophecy or words of knowledge. And we're not getting anything. It's okay at that time just to just pray and close the service. Or, you know, just pray generally for that person. You know, not just uh, saying something out of your own flesh or carnal or your own mind or your own emotions and saying, this is what God is saying. This is the word of God for you. Now, that is wrong, okay? So we need to keep our flesh in control and restrain and, um, you know, and always manifest with the pure work of the Holy Spirit as he requires, as he does, as he wills in and through our lives okay so what are some of the things we need to do is we've already said some of the things that we need to do how we can manifest purely in the spirit and keep our flesh under subjection is you know not to gratify the things of the flesh to die to the things of the flesh 
to you know to grow thing, uh, the things in the spirit and also to have an a heart attitude where god is given all the uh, glory okay and our willingness to only say and do what god wants us to say and do just like jesus okay jesus only said and did and heal people who he wanted he does he does not give any reason even for lazarus when he went to raise up lazarus he went on the fourth day he does not give any reasons for that my father told me this that and all of those stories he just says the important things even when he went to the pool of bethesda he healed only one person but it's god's will to heal everyone but he does not say why he healed only one person and walked off and did not heal the others so you just do what god is asking you to do and telling you to do okay um and also when you you know um when you do that you need to be very careful that you are not flowing out of your flesh but only saying and doing what the spirit of god is asking you to uh, do okay sometimes we can look at great men and women of god who are flowing in the gifts and we start copying their style you know the way they shake and the way they stutter and the way they scream and shout and jump and run from one corner of stage to another and their style the way they throw their coats and handkerchiefs and and all of those things you know don't do all of those things just do what the spirit of god is leading you to do even if you are very quietly just standing there and praying just do that it's the power of the holy spirit that should be manifested the power of the holy spirit that goes out and heals and delivers people and not these styles but we're not condemning people who do all of these styles it might be their way they want to do it okay they like doing it but it's not that we need to copy that and you know some of us shaking and screaming and jumping and you know oh, like that and blowing into the mic screaming into the mic all that is not really necessary okay Paramita says I saw some believers sprinkling the holy water and holy oil over their houses every day is it necessary I feel they are giving more importance to oil rather than god because of whom the oil is effective am I wrong to think that way no you're right to think that way but Paul says uh, in Romans chapter 14 and Romans chapter 15 as well so some people do things in their own faith in what their child like faith you know Uh, let them do some people think some day is important it's okay if some people think some meat is important to eat or should not be eating some uh, meat food is not something that we uh, you know food and clothing and all of those things are not something that we debate and argue and all of those things so if some people think that by sprinkling this holy oil and this holy water in their house is going to ward off evil and you know keep uh, the evil one away and uh, is going to be free peace and all of that it might be because of the cultural mindset they have and all of that we don't condemn them we don't put them down but what we can do is we need to teach them because they are naive they might be innocent they they are following their cultures and uh, the lifestyle of what they have seen and heard and they're doing that but we can always teach them and always tell them from the word of god and uh, tell them it's not just the oil and the water but it's the power of god so they can just sit down and you know just speak jesus over their family over their home you know over every area of their life and how they can see god move and 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 you know motivate them Uh, to do it so we need to be very lovingly gently just speak to them educate them from god's word and show them that you know in the early church nobody did all of those things but still there was you know they were protected there was uh, great things uh, god was doing even jesus never did any of these things so we educate them it will help them okay does that help paramita okay um so even sometimes you know the anointing can be imparted uh from one person to another person okay gifts can be activated through the laying on of hands okay so some of the gifts you have when you lay hands on somebody else they can the gifting in that area can be activated but it's important that if you are not called 
for that specific function and that specific role and a specific responsibility and you want impartation and be and you know you have people lay hands on you for to be imparted and for for the gifts to be activated it's not going to work why because god has not called you in that specific calling function and that specific uh, place or responsibility but if he has called you and then you ask people to you know lay hands so that you can receive the anointing and impartation and the gifts can be act activated is okay but if you're not called and you want impartation that in that area suppose you're not called to be a worship leader i'm not called to be a worship leader okay uh and uh, you know you i go up and ask all the great worship leaders to lay their hands and pray and the gifts is not going to be activated because i'm not called for that specific purpose of you know uh, being a worship leader okay so in the area of your calling and your function it's important to know what is god's call function in your life and in that area you can you know receive impartation or you know you can have 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 people lay hands on them on you so that the gifts can be activated okay um but you know uh anointing and gifting in specific area for your function for your calling is not just people lay hands on you it is your intimacy with god okay the greater your intimacy with god the greater the anointing and the gifting in that specific area okay the other thing is you know when we are moving in the gifts of the spirit and the anointing you know allow yourselves to be judged sometimes you know uh, we can do things we are not perfect human beings right anyone here perfect no okay although the spirit of god is perfect the anointing is holy pure and perfect we as god's instruments are not perfect and god knows that very well therefore you know whatever is ministered through imperfect vessel should be judged that's why we say when you you know the other eight methods you know of um, whether prophecy or godly counsel we always have to uh, validate that with the word of god and with the holy spirit okay so why do we do that even though the anointing is pure and perfect and holy because the vessels through which the anointing is released is imperfect okay and also we need to be as imperfect vessels come to a place where we are growing into christ likeness and uh, maturity in the ways of god okay um you know the last thing in this chapter is that you know god can manifest the holy spirit can manifest in very creative ways sometimes he can do things that are in a new way that we don't see in the word of god for example peter shadow you know peter apostle peter when he was walking his shadow they kept sick people uh, and even his shadow healed so we can't say hey this is not a move of god you know this is demonic because we don't see this anywhere in the old testament we don't see elijah doing this we don't see elisha doing this we don't see any of the prophets doing this this is not god's move okay a uh, paul's apron you know he was working and he was a businessman his apron his handkerchief put on people they were healed hey no this is not the word of way of god's doing this this is not, we don't see this anywhere in the old testament so we can't limit god in a box okay god can do things in new creative ways um but we need to be open to the manifestation and the work of the holy spirit the mu mu move of the holy spirit which can happen in unusual ways okay but also we need to know whether it is the move of the holy spirit how do we know if it is the work of the holy spirit or demonic spirit when we see a new fresh manifestation of creative way of science healing and deliverance happening how do we know whether it's the work of the holy spirit or the flesh the carnal nature or the uh, demonic spirits working I've I've explained this to you. Glory, Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. You have to look at the results. Wait and look for the results and the fruit. What do I mean by results and fruit? When the Holy Spirit works, uh, what happens? When there's a move of the Holy Spirit in a creative new way, what happens? What happens? 
Online students, what happens? Okay, the Holy Spirit glorifies it's, it's Christ. It's a permanent healing. Permanent Holy Spirit. Yes, there's life transformation. There is people's lives are transformed. Breakthrough happens. Deliverance happens. Healing happens. It is. It can be validated. It can be proved and tested. If it's the work of the flesh, or if it's the work of the uh, devil, what what is the result? No result, right? There's just hyper sensationalism and oh excitement and everything. But actually seeing there's no life transformation, there is no healing, there is no deliverance. Okay. Any questions on the anointing? Very short chapter. No questions? Online students? Okay, then we'll move to chapter seven. Okay, so we are looking at various areas in a minister's life, you know, where how we need to conduct ourselves, how we need to be accountable to God, various areas as ministers, as men and women of God, how we can serve Christ, how we can uh, minister. Okay, so um, uh, the chapter seven is results. You know, does God look for fruit in our ministry or in whatever area he's called us to do? Does he look for fruit? Yes. Okay. He looks for fruit. How do we know he looks for fruit? Thank you, Akil says yes. How do we know he looks for fruit? Online students, are you there? How do we know that God looks for fruit? Okay. Scripture in the New Testament. Which scripture in the New Testament? Ah, branch is not bearing fruit. Cut that branch. Prune the branch, John chapter 15, also the parable of the steward, the parable of the talent that Jesus speaks about, okay? Um, Jesus is referring to trees which do not bear fruit to cut it off, yes. The wine and the branches, right? So what happens, the wine dresser, what does he do when he don't bear fruit? What does he do? He'll cut it off, okay? And students... Cut it off. Okay. What happens when you're bearing fruit? John chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. What does a wine dresser do even when you're bearing fruit? Look at your Bible. What? How do you bear more fruit? What does he do? Please look at your uh, notes or the Bible. John chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. Pruning. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, what would I have done without Lucy in my class? <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. Yes, pruning. Yeah. What does it mean you're pruning? My mother loves to prune our garden and my father really gets upset when she cuts off all the branches. And she's saying, I'm pruning it so that it will grow nicely and will bear more flowers and fruits. Okay. She's always in the process of pruning. Okay, so God removes things that are unnecessary so that we can bear more fruit. All of the flesh, all of the things that is not holy, you know, he, he removes it from us. Okay, uh, we also spoke about the talents, the parable of the talents. Okay, the parable of the talents, what does Jesus teach us from the parable of the talents? You know the parable of the talents? One person is given how many talents? You make use of your talents. Okay. And how you make use of your talents. Okay, just make use of your talents? Is it just about making use of the talents? Yes, multiply. Thank you for that word. He's, you, he's looking for multiplication. Did you know that God is not just looking for us to use it? He can use it and not do use it, not bear any fruit. But he's using for he's looking for multiplication. Okay. So that is what he is looking, not just for us to maintain it, but to increase and to multiply. And the persons and the stewards or the, the, the men who multiplied it, what does he say? Well done, good and faithful servants. Okay. So he's God is looking for multiplication. Okay. 
Now, how can we bear fruit? What should we do to bear fruit? Come on, simple, this is easy, okay? The yeah, Akil says to increase by multiplying and effectively enhancing what we are blessed with. Thank you, Akil. Okay. What should we do in the Christian ministry to be fruitful? We should work, well, just work, labor hard, right? It's, it's hard labor. What else? What should we do to bear fruit? Wakey, wakey, everybody, think. Have you heard me talk about these two words which start with P and E? Spider. Perseverance. Have you heard me say that before? Endurance. Have you heard me say that before? Yes. Faithful. Have you heard that before? Patience. Have you heard that before? Yes. So all of these things we need to do. Be patient, faithful. Endurance. Thank you, Lucy. Endurance. Okay. What happens if we don't see fruit? What should we do? You should wait. How do you wait? Everything happens according to season. What should you do in the waiting time? Just pray. Continue to do what you're asked to do. Faithful be endure. Yes. What should you do when you don't bear fruit? Examine. Yes, you need to examine. See why you're not bearing fruit. What is happening? Is it lack of knowledge, negligence, skill? Are you doing the will of God? Are you in the right place at the right time? Remember, positioning yourself, you know, fulfilling God's purpose. Are you at the right place at the right time, doing the right things? You know, uh, because when you do that, you would receive the uh, um, fruit. Also, you need to know which season you are in. Remember the seasons we've learned in fulfilling God's purpose? It can be hard labor, groundbreaking season, foundation season. It can be building season. It can be pruning season. It can be harvesting season. Which season you are in, you need to know about that. Okay. So you need to ask all of these questions, take stock and see because God is looking for fruit. Okay. Um, when you bear fruit, you know, uh, it's good to testify, right? Yes or no? Give a testimony. Why is it important to testify? You should keep quiet about it when you're bearing fruit. Why should you testify? What happens when you testify when you're bearing fruit? Come on. You give glory to God. Okay. What else? What does it do to people when they listen to your testimony? It encourages people. Yes, thank you, Sonia. It, ed it encourages them. Thank you, Akil. It edifies them. It is to witness that, hey, when I am able to do this, God can do it through you. Hey, that person did it. God can do it through me. I need to also press it. Some kind of enthusiasm, some kind of uh, energies. And Andrew says this, faith moves us to another level. Amen. Okay. Yes. So, but when you're giving a testimony, how should you give the testimony? It should be like as it is. No extra masala. Yeah. No extra masala. Not saying, hey, 100 people came. Everybody was saved. Everybody were healed. Okay. The move of God, you know, touched everybody, of course. But you can't say everybody was healed. You have to say the right numbers. I think, you know, even though there's a move of God, I'm sure the move of God touched everybody. But I think there was about three or four people who accepted Christ. There were about five of them. Even if it doesn't happen, you know, in, there's no need to publicize and show. I said, yeah, I went and ministered. God moved, worked. I'm just giving glory to God. Okay, just state the facts as it is, you know, uh, being accurate in what you are saying and so that God can receive all the glory, okay? And don't um, uh, exaggerate what has happened, okay? Um, sometimes, you know, there are other people who uh, labor with us. And because they labor hard with us, we are able to bear fruit. So what should we do? We should give them the due honor, okay, recognition, uh, uh, talk about their contribution, what they have done, 
because of which we are able to see the fruit. Don't say it's all about I, me, myself. Okay? Say, as a team, we did this, you know, how God is and how people pitched in, what people did. And so it encourages them. And also, it, uh, you know, also in, uh, it also shows the fact that, you know, when God sends people into our lives, we are mindful of that. We are appreciative of that. We are thankful to God for uh, that. Do not rob other people of their honor. Okay. And give God all the glory and honor, like uh, the psalmist says in Psalm 115, verse 1. Can somebody read that, please? Psalm 115, verse 1. Psalm 115, verse 1. It's another point. Give God all the glory. It all happened because of him. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory. Because of your mercy, because of your truth. Amen. Thank you, Sonia. So to your name be all glory and honor. Okay. So don't give testimonies to promote how super special, super anointed you are, but just to give all the glory and honor to God. Okay. Also, when you are giving testimony, don't do it to compare or compete with other ministers and other men and women in the city or, uh, you know, other churches. If that is not the right motive, um, you know, uh, it should just be that, you know, we are giving glory to God. So don't compete with other churches. You know, God requires us to be faithful in what he's entrusted and called us to do. We are to give our best, do our best, grow in the calling that God has called us for and stay faithful and be focused on the fruit that we bear so that God's kingdom can be extended. Okay. Any questions on this chapter? Results or bearing fruit? Any questions? So God is looking for fruit. Okay, you might be saying, "Hey, I'm not in uh, ministry yet. I'm in Bible college. I'm studying." But even as you're studying, God is looking for fruit in what you are studying. Okay, how well you are engaging in his word, studying what is being taught, growing in the things of God, in the revelations, in the truth. So he's looking for fruit every season, every time of our life. Okay. If we bear fruit, what happens? What happened to the person who multiplied five to five? He was given in charge of greater or more cities, right? So when you're faithful in little things, God will entrust to us bigger things. So if you look at some people and say, why has God given him or her more than me? It's because that person was faithful in small things. So what is the small things? Small things can be you're in a small place now. You're just in a place where all of you in-person students are in Bible colleges studying. Right? You might see it as small, but God does not see it as small. God is looking for fruit. How well you use your time, the resources, that he has given to you is very important. That you're using your time and resources to study God's word, be equipped better, learning everything, taking the time to look through, read through, engage in his word, in the notes, everything so that you can be equipped. Let me tell you, once you are in the ministry, you have no time to even, you know, look at all of these things and son, you'll have to be so busy. So good to, you know, use this time usefully and resourcefully. God is looking for fruit. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Any questions online students? We'll move to chapter 8 if none of you are having any questions. It's about fellowship. Okay. What is fellowship? In the body of Christ, what is fellowship? Hello, very simple. Come on, what is fellowship? Eating biryani and uh, <laughs> uh, enjoying. What is fellowship? Communion, okay. Fellowship is where a group of people gather, okay. It's communion. Close relationship with God is, okay. Communion, is it with, uh, when you talk about fellowship in the body of Christ, is it with this, 
like minded people who think like us who move along with us okay uh, intimacy fellowship is intimacy talking about fellowship with one another in the body of christ here so what is fellowship when you're talking is it just people with our same wavelength our same understanding our same mindset what if people come from other denominations other styles of worship who don't uh, think that we need to be baptized in the holy spirit move in the gifts of the holy spirit say hallelujah praise the lord raise a hand shout amen <laughs> Should we fellowship with such people as also in the body of Christ, who are part of the body of Christ? Yes. Why should we fellowship with all of them in the body of Christ? Even though they are not of our same mindset, same doctrines, same denominations. We are all part of him. We are all part of the head who is the who is Christ. Okay? And we are part of the kingdom of God. Yes, thank you. We are one in Christ Jesus. We are here to serve one another. We are bought by the same even though we are different de denominations, we are bought by the same blood of Jesus Christ. We have the same Holy Spirit, same Father Son. We have the same uh, word of God, okay? And uh, we have to learn to connect fellowship and uh, you know, relate with one another. Is it important that all the local churches in the body, in the city, or the city-wide church should be one. When you talk about local church, it is our own, like APC. When you talk about city-wide church, it's about all the local churches in Bangalore City. Is it important for all, for the city-wide church to be one? Even though we are different in our denominations? Yes. Why is it important for us to be one? Thank you, Lucy. She says, yes. Why is it important for us to be one? Huh? Our head is one. Only when we are one as a city, white church can we impact our city. We can come against the gates of hell. See, the gates of hell are stationary. We have to, as a church, move against the gates of hell. And we need to move together in unity and oneness and also jesus in his high priestly prayer in john chapter 17 he's what does he pray father let them be one as we are one as the father spirit and son are one holy spirit are one we need to be one okay uh um yeah there's no so that there's no division amongst ourselves akil says sanjay says a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand will not stand yes very good thank you uh, Sanjay. So we are all part of the kingdom of God and we are all called as kingdom builders. Okay. We are not building our own kingdom. We are not, all, we are not building just APC. You are not building your own church. You are not building your own ministry. Even when I am part of APC, I'm, uh, I, I oversee a school outreach ministry called Catalyst. Okay. I just can't build a kingdom out of Catalyst. Catalyst is part of APC. APC is part of the citywide church. Citywide church is part of the kingdom of God. So I need to see how Catalyst can contribute to our church, to the kingdom of God. If I'm just thinking about Catalyst as a business, as, a, as my own kingdom and ministry, I'm failing in what God has called me to do or what he has entrusted me to do and that's very selfish so everything that god has given entrusted to us ministries churches we need to see how we can use that to impact the kingdom of god which means how we can impact together other ministries other churches how we can partner so i'm part of catalyst how can i partner with others we have our catalyst curriculum on our website anyone can use it Anyone in any city, if they approach me and said, we want to use, start this in our city, I just give them our curriculum, the manual which I have written, and they take it and start it. And I don't, you know, dominate and tell them what they need to do, how they need to do. Just give them the curriculum, tell them how we do it here, and let them do it as the Lord leads them. So that is building the kingdom of God. And even if you look at how Pastor Ashish is, thought about a, a envision apc everything our publications the 
uh, resources, whether it's children's church curriculum, catalyst curriculum, you know, whether it is our publications, whether it is um, even, you know, supporting missionary organizations, pastors, starting churches in various cities, doing various, uh, uh, you know, youth ministries and various other things in different places. It's all to build the kingdom of God. Okay, even in our city, he started something called, uh, you know, pastors fellowship. Wednesday morning, all the pastors in our city were invited in one of the hotels and they had breakfast and the time of worship and praying for our city. And, you know, uh, there was a smart passage that was given and we used to discuss. So it is bringing all the pastors from all denominations together. Okay, so. When he's thinking, he's not just thinking about APC, how I can build APC, but thinking about how we can, he can use what God has entrusted to him or people's church, how he can use that to build the kingdom of God. And that is what we, you and I need to also do. Okay. We need to see God's, what is the manner, um, what is the mandate God has given to us as kingdom builders, as part of his kingdom? What is the mandate? To see his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not to see my kingdom come, not to see my ministry come, not to see my church come, my will be done on earth, okay? And God can help me. No, it is, you know, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, okay? So, um, Esther says, yes, truly incredible pastor work for the expansion of God's kingdom. Yes, thank God for a man like Pastor Ashish and his, the way he thinks and, you know, how he's leading us and guiding us and imparting to us um, in building God's kingdom. Okay, so um, we need to see uh, growth in the, in the kingdom of God, not just in our promotion of our name, our work, our ministry, okay, but see God's kingdom further. And also when we do that, we need to see that there is unity among the people of God and people of God are strengthened, okay? And as kingdom builders, you know, we need to look beyond our vision to see how we can bless other visions, other ministries, other churches, other ministers. That is why as APC, you know, every year we support other ministries, other churches, other men and women of God, okay? And as kingdom builders, we can also partner with others, step into their um, vision and, you know, help them to, uh, you know, um, how they can help build up their church. Just last two, three days back, I had somebody call me from South India and said, you know, we want to start a children's church. Can you help me how to start children's church? And then I gave her all the details. I also told her that, you know, our curriculum is on the website she said i'll pay i said no it's all free you can just go to our website and use it and she was so happy and so you know we are here to partner with others to build others not just to see you know it's my ministry i need to do it i shouldn't share my resources with others okay so when we are ministering in god's kingdom it's important for us to to see how we can enhance and build god's kingdom and not look at what i should get out of it so this lady called me and said, how can I build children's church? I should not look at how, what I can get out from her. See, I should be willing to say what I can give of what God has taught me and entrusted to me, how I can give it to her, share it with her so that I can help build her and build the children in her state and extend God's kingdom. So it's not about what I can get, but what I can give of what God has given to me to bless others and to help build his kingdom. Okay. Uh, we'll uh, continue with um, this chapter, just a few more pages um, next Friday. Anyone has any questions? Just one more minute before we close. Any more questions? Any questions? Um, today I'll be releasing assessment three. Okay, I'll give you a week to do the assessment. Okay, so it's not a hurry. Um, but I'll give you a week to do the assessment. It'll be the same checkboxes and... Uh, Two and fours, maybe, and um, and um, um, multiple choice. Multiple choice means only one answer. Check boxes means more than one answer. All the answers are there in your textbook. Um, 
and I'll tell you which lessons from receiving God, this purpose and code of honor. I think I'll just give you two chapters. Okay, um, that's it. Yeah. And regarding the system, this is not a system that I uh, uh, invented. It was a system that's put in place about these checkboxes and um, these, um, uh, you know, multiple choice. The way that way that it is uh, laid out is something that has uh, been the system has been put in place. Uh, even the format about how marks is given, how mar marks should be, you know, uh, you know deducted all that is a system that is laid in place so i'm just following the system so and the system has been laid in place because pastor says it's an open book question and uh, since it's an open book question all the answers are given there so so fair enough if you don't get all the answers right you don't get the points okay thank you daniel for your um, comment and uh, thank you lucy and daniel thank you everyone have a blessed weekend everyone and i'll see you next week thank you